because I think this may be the last time that I ever stay in this van. Because yes, that is right, people. I am leaving the UK. We may have a major issue on our hands. I was only about five minutes up the road and a light come on the dash and it said insufficient engine oil pressure. Right, there's a massive pool of liquid down there. It's still dripping, but I think that's probably condensation from the aircon. Back her up a little bit. Water. I mean, I am no mechanical expert by any means but I can't see any oil dripping anywhere. Yeah, I read a couple of things. Um, two different guys basically said, if it comes up with low pressure, even for a second and then goes off, go and get it sorted because both of them, the light come on, then it went off, they carried on driving. Next thing they know, they need a new engine, five, six grand. So obviously I don't want it to get to that state. I've just driven over the road here because there is a couple of garages. I know they're gonna be busy, but I'm just gonna see if they can do anything to help me out or at least tell me if I can keep driving. Yeah. Turns out this place is accident repair only. They don't do normal work. They've told me about another garage just around the corner. The thing is, I don't want to be driving it much until I know it's all right to drive because if this engine seizes up, that is it. That is the heart of the pigeon. Here we go, East Peckham MOT Centre. Would you look at that? There's a jelly bean. That's got to be a sign. Whether it's a good sign or a bad sign, that's anyone's guess. Check the oil, we'll see if that's anything for you. Chuck a little bit in it for you. Should I drive it for a bit and then recheck it and see if it's leaking out? Oh, yeah. Cheers. He's topped it up with some more oil when he said there's probably like a 70% chance that that was the only issue, but there's still a 30% chance it might be something else causing a low pressure. But for now, I'm just gonna have to drive it and keep checking on it and hope for the best. I've got a lot to discuss in this episode. I wanna talk to you guys about the future of this van, the future of the channel in general, but I didn't wanna make it a boring talking video. So, as always, I'm going on an adventure. The other day I was searching on Google Earth for a nice park up by the beach, and what I found was, I think it was like five different shipwrecks or boat wrecks maybe. A cluster of knackered boats is what I refer to it as. I don't believe it. I'm probably now 45 minutes up the road. The temperature gauge has been fine, but now there's an oil light flashing. Why didn't that flash in the first place when I had no oil? I don't know. But there's obviously something else wrong. Oh, why, why is this happening? Let's turn her back on and see what happens. So it says change engine oil. It's very Ignition simple on. apparently. Ignition on. All the way down to the floor. Throttle down to Pump the floor. Pump the brake pedal seven times. Pump the brake One, seven times. Two, this geese is having a three, laugh. Four. Four. Five. five six. <laughs> Six, seven, seven. He's pranking me. Hold the throttle all the way down. Hold the throttle seconds. down for sixty seconds. Right. For what it's worth, let's turn her back on and see if it's worked. Obviously, it hasn't. She's on. The oil light flat. Hang on. It stopped. All I've done is I've dropped a pin on the map quite close to the location where the sunken ships are. So any second now it's going to tell me I've arrived, but I don't actually know where to go from there. The destination is on your right, 322 Lower Rain Road. Well, obviously that is not Online. my destination. Oh no, road ahead closed. Wait, what's this? There's a two meter height barrier. What are we going to do now? Right, let's go for it. Go! Whoa! There's only one thing for it. We've got to reverse onto the road. Nice and safe. We're free. Now what? Oh, hang on. Let's pull over here. Maybe we could just stay here, actually. I reckon this is all right, you know? That over there is where I'm hoping to go to find the boat. And this is my little parking spot. It's actually quite nice, if you think about it. I've got a little sock thing down there in case I get cold feet. And here I've got a sofa and it's conveniently facing away from the road. So in the general living area of the van, there's nothing really new to report, but under a bed. Now that is a different story. I've been working hard, check this out. This is the beginnings of my electrical system. Now I've built this frame sort of cabinet thing out of the same wood that I made the bedboard from. 
and I've just edged it with this silicon stuff to make it look nice and neat. As you can see, she fits like an absolute glove. There's a lot of space behind it there for the cables to get tucked away so you're not going to see much wiring on the front. And at some point, fingers crossed, hopefully soon, there is going to be a massive leisure battery down here on the floor in front of it. And just a brief rundown of what this does. So this is a distributor, so the battery will run up into this and from there it will go out to all the different circuits we've got a little 12 volt fuse box there and another one there up on the back we've got a dc to dc charger which will charge the battery when i'm driving we've got two solar chargers to connect to the panels that'll be on the roof these are just some breakers this is the victron servo which is effectively the brains of the entire system and on the end here it's not actually mounted properly it'll be a bit higher up on that bracket eventually but this is my inverter charger so i can charge up the entire setup with an electric hookup or an electric vehicle charger charging point on the outside plus there's going to be cables going out through the van to various sockets so that is going to run my inverter my microwave and my air fryer it won't be long before all of that is wired up to the van and then i have full permanent power in here but yeah i just wanted to show you the basics of how it's beginning and also i wanted to say a big shout out actually to 12 volt planet that's where i got everything from it's like a one-stop shop for everything electrical and not only that they were so helpful on the phone when it came to figuring out what i do and don't need so yeah i highly recommend them brilliant shop but right now it's time to go and find the cluster of knackered boats i'm just walking down that little driveway from the road seems quite quiet around here well the main road's busy but there's no one down this bit do we go straight ahead or do we take one of these side paths what is round here a field oh there's a rabbit there's a rabbit there's been pathways going off in all directions but i've just been using the map to sort of aim myself the right way and just go for it but it looks like this might be promising. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We have found water. I can actually see some sort of a boat up on the grass. I'm wondering if that's one of the things that I've seen on Google Earth. Yeah, there's a sign on the gate that says this area gets completely flooded, which explains things. It's obviously how the boats have got here in the first place. Brilliant. She's only gone and done it again. The digital bird has lost all signal and a return to home feature is not working. She's somewhere up there. I need to get her back before it falls in the sea. I can hear it though. It's above me. We're going to have to go back around here and hopefully the signal will connect. That was a close call, I'm telling you. That thing is about four years old now, so it's no surprise that it's not working properly like it used to. And to be fair, I do push it quite hard. I took it up so high, I just wanted to get a shot looking back in land. But she's returned home, and that's the main thing. The digital bird is in my bag. But while she was up in the air, I did discover that there are pathways that go right to the end of this little finger of land. So I'm going to head to the end and see what it looks like in real life. A beautiful adult pigeon just sat there. What are you up to, mate? Who needs to go on safari when we have magnificent specimens like that right here in the UK? Found a little private beach down here. Look at that. You can even have a little party. Look, you can have your DJ up here. You could be down there on your private beach. If only I had some mates. All right, here we go. Birds you may see on the estuary. My ex better not be on here. I'm not being funny, right? But how can anybody lose a glove that's that bright? What I want to know, why is it always just one glove? Does someone just put one on and be like, yeah. Yeah, this feels normal. This is how I left the house. On the last episode, I found a beach without any water. Well, on this episode, I might have even topped that. I found the world's thinnest beach. I mean, look at it. What is the point? You couldn't even get a deck chair on that. Random sock. Brilliant. And here we have it. I've reached the end. Not the end of time, obviously. The end of the land finger. So I guess that's up towards Essex. Kent is the other side. And that in between is the pathway to Europe. I know that England is technically in Europe, but you know what I mean. But talking of Europe, I have been learning some languages, not in a real advanced way, just in a more basic way so that I can communicate roughly with the people where I go, because yes, that is right, people, I am leaving the UK, hopefully by the end of this year. Now, I'm gonna tell you more about my travels later on in the video, but right now I wanted to talk to you about how I've been learning these languages 
and it's with a really easy to use app called Rosetta Stone. Usually when you learn a language it's from a book or from a video or something like that and it's quite good to learn but the thing is you don't get any feedback of how you're actually doing whereas Rosetta Stone has voice recognition built into the app so that when you say your phrases back to it it will literally judge you on how well you're pronouncing them. For example I can now walk up to anybody in France and let them know je veux épouser un pigeon and you never know when things like that might come in handy. In fact you know what I've been thinking about it for a while let's open up the app and start a bit of Chinese shall we? So when you open up a new language it gives you the option to select beginner intermediate or advanced and as much as I feel like I could smash advanced Chinese just like that I think we're gonna go for beginner for now. Ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Oh look at that! I'm a genius! I just got 92% pronunciation on that first go. Right, well, that's it. I'm off to Shanghai. But in all honesty, it is a good app, so if you're looking to learn some new languages, I highly recommend it. What I'll do is I'll stick a link down below, and if you click on that, you're also going to get 50% off. But right now, we've completed the mission, we've filmed the boats, we've reached the tip of the finger. So we to the I told Siri to take me to the nearest supermarket and apparently we are zero minutes away. I'm kind of hoping it's a Sainsbury's because that Japanese chicken that I had the other day was pretty good and I quite fancy it again for dinner. Wait! Rose! Oh, Waitrose. I mean, it's no Sainsbury's, but apparently Waitrose is supposed to be quite nice. Let's just hope it's not too expensive. wondering why I'm walking funny. They've had me pants down and they didn't stop there. Oh. 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 I'm not even going to tell you how much that cost. They've done me hard. So long Waitrose, good riddance. All the things I could have bought to think I could have had a holiday. We have left the mainland and we've come over on the bridge to the Isle of Sheppey. I found a park up here, in fact I found two park ups here so we're going to check them both out. One of them I think is definitely fine to park in overnight with no height barriers and that's the one that's just around here. And then there's another one which might be a bit risky whether we can stay there but we're going to go and check it out anyway because it looks a little bit better. Although having said that, this one looks alright you know. Let's just check it out real quick, it's free. There's 20 spaces. Oh, this might have to be the one. Look at that. You can literally see the sea out of the window. There's a few cars here, so I'm assuming they will go, which means I can rock up in the corner there tonight. See, it looks like one other camper, but the rest of the cars will probably go. And if we do stay here, that means we get a direct view of the ocean out the window in the morning. I was just talking to that guy in the Mazda Bongo. He's out there, he's been watching some dolphins. Apparently there's dolphins knocking about just off the coast. And he was saying that this other place down the road, apparently they've taken away all the signs. You can stay there overnight now. He said there's loads of dog walkers that turn up here well early. He even gave me an impression of the dog walkers and their dogs. Come on, beautiful. Come on. Come on in, let's all go. No, leave it. Leave it. Okay, coming in. But yeah, he recommended this other place down the end, so we're going to go and check that out now. Okay, it looks like we've arrived, and to be honest, well, it might be a little bit windy here, but it is a lot more open. It feels more like in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, one of these will be good. Look, there's a little blue caddy. Motorhomes everywhere, so it's obviously the place to be. I'm glad it's a nice spot and it's nice and sunny because I think this may be the last time that I ever stay in this van. I was thinking about it on the way here, and unfortunately there's only one possible way that I can recover financially from the Waitrose incident. Hopefully we'll attract a buyer because I just can't see any other way out of this mess. I cannot believe it. Alright, I had to apologise to these guys because they actually thought they were going to come and buy the van. But uh, yeah, yeah we was interested. I'm know? afraid it's not for sale, even for 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is brilliant news. I can't believe I actually got a customer. Do you know what though? That means 
If I ever do need to sell the pigeon, I know now that she'll be snapped up in an instant for 10 mil. Now, I was getting a little bit hungry and I was going to start cooking, but to be honest, I cannot stand to look at that Waitrose food just yet. So I'm going to enjoy one of my health drinks. I've got my cameras ready to offload the footage. I'm going to jump up into bed, chill out and listen to the sounds of the ocean. I have relaxed the hell out of myself in this bed. There's literally no hell in me anymore. It's gone. I've been watching the darkness descend upon the beach. Oh, and I figured something out, right? The sun set somewhere over there, which means it should rise somewhere over there, which is directly over the sea. Now, I don't remember the last time I was up for the sunrise. Probably 1746, the great summer of, well, 1746. It was a Wednesday. Hey Siri, what time is sunrise? Today, sunrise was at 6.18. All right, well, let's not be too hasty in our decision, but I'm going to attempt to get up and catch the sunrise. Dinner time. God, it smells like an absolute fortune in here. All right, what do we want? One of these and one of these. We've got crispy money beef. That was about 1.2 mil. And this tie sticky rice, it would have been about 800 grand, but luckily for me, there's a generous 25% off. So it was only a mere 600K. The beef is in the air fryer. 170 degrees for 10 minutes. The sauce, is it gonna fit in this beast? I wonder what we can do. We'll chuck the rice in that pot. Whoa, then that whole thing can go in there. All right, this is insane. That power station is doing nothing. It's just literally running that bulb and that's it. That power station is running the fridge, the air fryer and the microwave all at the same time. She is an absolute beauty. And if all goes to plan, it should be prepared at the exact same time like only a professional chef can achieve. All right, the air fryer has just finished. What's she looking like in there? Oh, and look at that, on time. Cause it's getting a bit hot in here again. This is how you're supposed to do it. This is the way they do it in the Michelin style restaurants. In comes the crispy money beef. Next up, some pure liquid gold topped with a little bit of wealth and then garnished with the good stuff right on top. And as far as 1.8 million pound meals go, that is the one. Wait, what is that? It's like stuck in your teeth. Ah. It's a tenner. Right, I'm gonna finish this up, then I'm gonna clear up and then we are gonna have a chat. Let's just turn this down a minute so you can hear me. Now the plan for the channel, well this year's been a little bit difficult actually because trying to build the van whilst also running this channel has been really hard. It actually takes about four or five days to make one of these 15 minute videos for you guys. But as soon as this van is fully finished, I've got bigger plans. The ultimate end goal, and this is something which I've not told anyone about yet, the reason why I built this van, I want to drive the pigeon to the Arctic Circle. It's going to be a massive challenge, a trip of a lifetime, and I want to take you guys with me. But before I do that trip, because there's a hell of a lot of prep to do on a van to get it ready for those sorts of temperatures, I want to do a test run in the winter down to somewhere like Switzerland. I want to spend a couple of weeks down there driving about in the snow, seeing how the van does, seeing how I do, and more importantly, seeing what sort of content we can get out of it, because I want to start making these mini series and really bringing a little bit more value to this channel because you guys have been so patient whilst I get through this build, and I feel like I want to give you something special in return, not in a weird way. I hope you're all as excited about this as I am. I genuinely can't even believe that I've got to this stage already where I'm able to even start imagining doing things like this. But really, it's all thanks to you guys watching. I can't thank you enough, and I always say it, but honestly, it's so appreciated, you don't even know. Now, if I've got any chance of getting up to see this sunrise, I better start thinking about getting some sleep. So rather than putting a projector on, I'm just gonna get straight into bed, put the camera down, and try to get me a few hours sleep and get up at 6 a.m. When the alarm went off this morning, my first reaction was, not a chance. And then I looked out at the curtain, and I just kind of laid there for about 10 minutes, reflecting on how far this channel's come in the past year and a half, and thinking about the future, and where this van's gonna take me, and all the adventures we're gonna have, and the things that I'm gonna see. And I guess I just had one of those moments of feeling fully grateful for everything in life right now. So recently, a few things have been getting me down a little bit, and I haven't really been feeling myself, but 
I have no reason to feel like that. So moving forward, I really want to just start taking every opportunity that I can to make things work. Not only with this channel, but just with life in general. I fully believe that when we get to the end of our lives, the only things that we're going to regret are the chances that we didn't take. So it's time to start seizing the moment and really taking advantage of life. So as always, I just want to say a massive thank you to anybody who's donated to the channel by buying me a brain cell through the link in the description below. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart, as I said yesterday. It's appreciated more than you know. And until next time, thank you for watching.